hello, hello, all my amazing GovCon winners. Appreciate you being here today. I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit, so please bear with me. Appreciate you. Oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, we have to raise it. Okay, everyone. One day soon here in the Kizzy Shopping Network, I will have my own crew and I won't really have to worry about adjusting. Just when I think it's perfect, I look and part of my head's cut off, but you know what? We're gonna still run with it. It's Kizzy Shopping Network. This is how live and real we are in that you're getting adjustments on the fly. So for those of you who are here tonight, hello, 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 I'm gonna make one other little small adjustment. Thank you all for being here live. Thank you all for being here during the replay. For those of you who may be new, uh, the Kizzy Shopping Network, it's the number one place to provide you product or service to help take your government contracting business to the next level. That's what this is all about. So I appreciate each and every one of you, again, for being here. And in case you're like, who is this beautiful woman that's is is addressing, that's adjusting the uh, camera? My name would be Dr. Kizzy Parks. And I've uh, been awarded over $50 million in federal government contracts. So welcome. Here at the Kizzy Shopping Network, we have some amazing offers. So, and thank you for being here, Sarah Penjo. So I have something really special for everyone here tonight. This is super, super, super special. So please make sure you like, you share. I'm gonna share right now in my community. And if you have yet to join my community, it's 305-853-9481. So I'm gonna notify everyone in the community I actually am the person uh, who messages on here. So you're getting a real person. This is not a bot. So please be aware. Also, for those of you who have not joined, because a free way to get information is by going to my Facebook group. So I'm gonna put that in here on a second, put, post that. So just give me a second. And this is all about how to win government contracts. That's what this is all about today. How do you win government contracts? So what's really important, hands down, it always begins with your mindset, your intuition, what you're trying to manifest. So I love using my money and manifesting Oracle cards uh, today. I like to use these during a lot of kitty shopping networks because I have a really cool offer for you. So the offer is any purchase that you make this week, Sunday to Sunday, you get entered into a drawing to have a proposal, to have proposal assistance by me. And if you've purchased something in the past, don't worry, just purchase something again. I have something for as low as $7. So all of you who purchase, you get entered into a drawing to have yours truly help you with a proposal. So you can go to close contracts for cash, for instance. I'm gonna start dumping the uh, links here. And I'm also working on some new things. I have a lot of amazing things for you because the entire purpose of Kizzy Shopping Network is to provide a most amazing offer to you. And for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, I heard about your challenge, it's so amazing. We had almost 150 in our most recent challenge and it will be held at the end of October. If you're interested, get a ticket. I just dropped the link here. VIP is 297, executive is 97. It is an amazing, Five days with yours truly. If you get VIP, VIP always better. Two hours a day. If you get executive, it's one hour a day. And with VIP, you can ask questions. 
and you get all the recordings. So now's the time to get this because I may have to, in a couple of weeks, start charging $500 for people to ask questions. So get it now. You're getting a deal. Challenge is amazing. It's going to easily, it's 10 times what you pay. And any purchase made in the next week, you get a chance to have yours truly help you with a proposal. That That's his amazing things. Then um, I also have the Make More Money video, AKA the David video. What's up, Quan? Hey, Quan. What's up, Bobby? What's up, everybody who's here? I uh, make more offers video that is $49. So any purchases made this week. So I'm going to pull a card for today because we're talking about how to win contracts. I'm going to move this pumpkin over. My brother Joey is so kind. He got me the pumpkin. I have this acorn looking thing. Ooh. And I have this thing. These are all really cool and fun. Very festive. So we're going to pull a card. And hi, Daphne. So the way this works on Kizzy Shopping Network, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks, and I've been awarded over $50 million in government contracts. Feel free to post your questions here. Put them in the chat. Again, appreciate you being with me as I was organizing, setting up, because I know in the future I will have somebody doing this. But in the interim, it's me. So post question. I'll be on here maybe 30 minutes or so. Kind of feeling this one. Abundant lifestyle. If you're into, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're into numbers, the number is 17. You are being called to adapt or adopt an abundant mindset. Focus on the blessings in your life and express gratitude for them. Trust that abundance is your birthright and that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. This is a really strong card. I know it may be reversed. Abundant lifestyle. So, and Marquise, Ms. M, Quantum Edge, Bobby, Health and Fitness, Pampered Pack and Ship, you're always here, KM, Cedric, Shadrick, Joe, um, Serapin, and anybody else who's here, I just want to say thank you all so much for being here because my goal and our goal here at the Kizzy Shopping Network is to offer you a product or service that'll take you to the next level. So ultimately, you can live out all of your hopes and dreams through federal government contracting. That's what this is about. So abundant lifestyle. In order to win government contracts, it begins here. Do you have a product or service that the government wants to purchase? And most importantly, do you have a cage code? A cage code is needed if you want to prime with the government agency. You got to have a cage code. You definitely need that. You go to sam.gov. And here's something I want to add today. And I may have to get up to get some sparkling water. Actually, I am. So y'all bear with me. You're going to see me in the back when I go, oh, you see a little bit. But you can still hear me. I was chatting with someone, and they were on Sam.gov, and they mentioned that they're Business failed verification. It failed verification is what happened. We need a little color back there. Business failed verification on Sam.gov. And, oh, I love that. VIP was well worth it. Learned a lot. Good. I'm glad you did. And started to ask her questions. I said, did you... Entering your business name, not your personal name. Excuse me. Did you enter a physical address? She's like, no, I have a virtual address. I said, okay, well, that could be part of the problem. She's like, yeah, but she's like, I, I think it's something else. Well, here's what I learned. Some people out there are stating that in order to be a government contractor, you just need a tax ID, and then that's it. You, you get a tax ID, but then you have to like legally register your business. Having a tax ID is the, the first part 
But then you have to register with your state, your state, city, county. So she didn't do that. So that's why I kept failing verification. So for those of you out there, this is very important. When you set up your business, you're setting it up legally, no matter what approach. Because some have said, well, I just want a middleman, Kizzy. So, okay, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, somebody created this and I bought it. It doesn't matter the structure of their business. It doesn't matter if they manufactured that. It doesn't matter where they got that from. They're a business. This is not like when I was leaving the Beyonce concert and a dude had a pile of flip-flops and he's like, ladies, your feet hurt. I know your feet hurt. Come get some flip-flops. I don't remember how much they were. $2, $5. You can cash app. You can Venmo. You can give me cash. Look, I'm not saying that he's not a legitimate business owner. Chances are maybe he hasn't taken the proper steps to go through everything. Or maybe he has and I'm completely wrong. Either way, you must have a tax ID and register your company. That's first and foremost. I'm going to just take a look at the questions. So today, the offer is any purchase that's made within the next week, you get entered into an opportunity to have yours truly help you review a proposal with you. Okay? So you have closed contracts for cash. There's a $7 download. You have the make more um, money approach, aka middleman, subcontracting for 49. You have the five day VIP, VIP always better experience for 297. You have the executive for 97. In case you ever wonder why I look down, it's just because I'm reading my notes. So I appreciate each and every one of you. So this is the time. This is the time to take full advantage of these offers. More offers will be coming, way more opportunities. I'm also going to release like a 97 offer, 297, 497, 440, you know, all kinds of things are coming out there. So, and Raheem, you are a blessing. So, and homesteading, hello to you too. Galen, I'm looking to bid on a contract. Should I get all the information from the subcontractor for the proposal? Veterans Intelligence for pro pro uh, Property. We couldn't have done it without you. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Matthew, what's up? Matthew, I couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. So here's how this works. How to win contracts. How to win government contracts. Okay. The second thing is you must understand what is or are the evaluation criteria for the opportunity. So Galen asks, okay, he wants to do the middleman. Do I just, does he have the subcontractor do all the things? So let's take a step back because many out there, they will say, you find an opportunity, you find three vendors, you get the information from them, you have them do all the work, you submit it, you win, Life is great. I mean, we know the hair is popping today, y'all. And you move on to the next one. Now, there are some additional steps that need to be discussed in that process. So for instance, there's a woman in my Facebook group and she was like, I don't understand. I submitted for janitorial work. My bid was the lowest, but I didn't win. Okay, so let's talk about that. I don't know what the evaluation criteria was, Chances are it wasn't price. Maybe it was best value, which means it's a combination of experience, technical approach, maybe resumes and price. And yes, they ask sometimes for resumes or more information when submitting for janitorial work. So Galen, the first thing you have to ask yourself is what is or are the evaluation criteria. It's in literally like 90% of all the documents. It has different terminology. That's what you want to find before you even call any vendors. Because if the evaluation criteria is that you have to have the past performance, then chances are your win rate is really low. And that's what I suspect occurred with the woman in my Facebook group. Because she said she had past performance, but it was through the subcontractor. 
So if I'm the federal government and I see you have past performance, but it's only because of a subcontractor, am I really going to want to go with you or go with a company who has the past performance through their company? Do you just want to hire somebody who said that they're going to find you a painter or do you want to hire a competent painter? Things to ask. So for those of you joining Kizzy Shopping Network today, the offer, any purchase that you make in the next week, you are entered into an opportunity for yours truly to work on a proposal with you. And the card today, abundance. Abundance lifestyle. You are being called to adapt an abundance mindset. Focus on the blessings in your life and express gratitude for them. Trust that abundance is your birthright and that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. I love that last line that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. We default to this negativity and keep the questions coming, everybody. We default to, oh God, right? It, the gas is too high. My kids are on my nerves. It's too sunny, it's too cold. You know, I spoke to a guy today and he was like, oh man, you know, it's like warm here, which is nice, but I can't wait for it to be cold. And then, you know, then it's cold and they're like, oh, I don't like the cold. I can't wait for it to be warm. Express gratitude. That's another piece of this, right? In your life and express, focus on the blessings in your life and express gratitude. Gratitude that you have the resources to be online. You have access to the internet. You have choice. You have the ability to bid on government. There are people in this world that don't even have the basics. They don't have clean water. They don't know how to read. There are people in America, millions of people who don't even know how to read. So be grateful for what you have, for the family that you have, the love that you have. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. So grateful to you, Matt, for being here. He's one of my amazing students who's grinding it out. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to be here in front of you. I'm grateful for the knowledge that I have to even set this up, though it may not be perfect. I'm grateful for this life. So keeping with abundant lifestyle to win a government contract, have to have your cage code, understand the evaluation criteria. And then next, bid on what works for you. Okay, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but let's take a look at all these questions. What's included in the Make More Money? It's $49, and David walks you through the exact process that he goes through to build a $3 million a year business. Abundance. Yes, Shanae, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so we have Osiris, and please overlook my enunciation. Hello, Kay, that's right. Dr. Parks, over $50 million in government contracts. For doing the middleman, when calling the sub, I know I'm supposed to get a quote, but what about the other information, getting a tag pass when they're working on or if they have to fill out a form? So that goes right back to the evaluation criteria and what are the actual requirements of the opportunity? Some opportunities, your team has to go through some type of background check. Some opportunities, your team may have to actually... Uh, take a course, take some type of training. So it goes back to what is required. Whether you're middlemanning, you're priming, what, subcontracting, whichever language you use, let's put that over here. You are the business owner. The contract is in your name. The responsibility is yours. It's yours. It's all yours. It's yours. So you got to manage it. Crudy, crude. I need to add NACE code to my SAM account. Is there anything I need to be wary of? No, not at all. I mean, well, I, but my only suggestion is if you are in the middle of applying for like woman-owned small business set aside or 8A, I wouldn't do that. So going back to, you got to look at kind of what you're going to go after, right? What's key is if you're going after products, let's say you win a furniture opportunity, you win it for 150,000 and you only have to pay out 90 to buy the furniture, where's the $90,000 coming from? I 
I mean, the answer is you. Where are you getting this $90,000? You sell, let's say, water bottles. Where is the $5,000 coming from to pay for the water? I remember I saw an agency had an opportunity for Palace of Gatorade. Where are you getting the money to pay for the Gatorade? So if you go this path, you must make sure you have the resources for it. I received countless emails, DMs, messages. Dr. Parks, Kizzy, Krizzy, as long as y'all don't call me the B word. I won. I don't know. I'm going to pay for it. Now, it's a beautiful place to be in, right? More money, more problems. But you still have to figure it out. There are plethora of opportunities. There's high interest loans. There's factoring. There's GoFundMe. There's a ton of options. Regardless of the approach that you take, what's vital is that you actually deliver on the contract. Because what sense does it make to win a government contract if you're unreliable? You probably have heard those stories. Somebody, they, their house is in shambles because they hired the wrong contractor or electrician or painter. They gave them the money. They're so excited. Weeks go by, months go by, and it still looks like crap because the person deuced out, Chris Brown was out. Now that's a straight scammer. But then there are situations where the person just did a shoddy job. Isn't there like a TV show on like uh, IG, uh, HGTV, IG. <laughs> I watched a lot of IDTV back in the day. Uh, HGTV, isn't there some show on there about people who had questionable repairs and this guy comes in and makes it all work, right? The same applies to us as government contractors. The government does not want to be screwed over. They don't want a shoddy job. They went through all of these steps to award this work to you. They want you to deliver, like dominoes, right? They want you to deliver. Pizza Hut, Uber Eats. So I'm taking a look at these questions, Kizzy Shopping Network. My name is Dodge Kizzy Parks. Been awarded over $50 million in federal government contracts. The offer for today, any purchase that you make this week, you get entered into an opportunity to get a uh, proposal assistance review by yours truly. So those different opportunities, close contracts for cash. There's a five-day challenge. And then there's also the David video. There's a ton of opportunities coming up that I am working on, especially since the new fiscal year has come up. And that's why I decided to do this topic because some people, what they're going to find is they were able to win because there were thousands of opportunities to bid on and the government was rushing to spend money. And now that there aren't as many opportunities because the ocean is now bloody and full of a bunch of sharks, they're going to struggle. But y'all are GovCon winners. Y'all ain't going to struggle because you're here. Other people will struggle. So I'm going back through this. Unfortunately, as a government employee, I can't bid on any government contracts. That's correct, General. Just bait, bid on state and local. Awesome. No, Matthew, I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you love to hear this. This is awesome. And again, um, oh wow, it's my first time catching live, great. Nate Dog, what are some contracts that can be done by myself? That they, That's dependent on you and to another strategy on how you win government contracts. You have to ask yourself, do you want it to be something that you're doing or you pay other people to do? When I first started out over 15 years ago, I became the diversity and inclusion queen in the Department of Defense. I analyzed the data, I spoke at events, I gave trainings to all kinds of agencies in the DOD, Army Reservists in New Orleans, Air National Guard in Texas, National Guard Bureau Diversity Conference in Massachusetts. I was everywhere, I was at the opening of a darn envelope if it had to deal with diversity and inclusion. I was there and I did the vast majority of the work and I would win other opportunities. For instance, I spoke at Fort Belvoir for women's 
uh, observance month. I was hired by the Department of Defense to provide all new DOD supervisors with their diversity and inclusion training. I also won a contract to help with cultural competence and to create a competency model around that. I was doing the bulk of the work. Later on, I moved into what I like to call an entrepreneur category. And that is, I started having people do the thing so I could work on the business and grow the business. And that's when I moved into staffing and other areas. So you have to ask yourself, what are you good at? What do you like doing? And what is it that the government wants to buy that you can do? That's all you gotta do, easy peasy. So some more questions here. Um, somebody's impersonating me on TikTok. Yes. So I, I again, our car today is abundant lifestyle, right? Abundant lifestyle. Trust that abundance is your birthright and that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. You're being called to, to adapt an abundant mindset. Focus on the blessings in your life and express gratitude for them. I am blown away at what has happened in a year of being on YouTube. And I really didn't start putting in extreme work on this channel until probably the first, not until maybe three months into YouTube. Since then, there have been people or whomever have impersonated me on Instagram and on TikTok. Thank you for making me aware of the TikTok account. I have reported two of them. I reported the, the most recent one I reported. I don't think they took it down. I'm trying to get a check mark on TikTok. I have a check mark elsewhere. So I'm grateful for what has happened. So what I'm sharing with all of you is just be aware. One, I'm not going to DM you about investments or crypto. I'm not. But <laughs> am I into crypto? Yes. Am I going to ask you or sell you into crypto? No, I'm not going to do that. So especially on TikTok, please be aware. And here is the telltale sign on TikTok. I have a video where there's a sticker. It's me opening the door and I'm like, ooh. That video is like my highest, one of my highest performing videos on TikTok. There's like hundreds and thousands of views on it. When you go to the fake account, they don't have that. They don't have that at all. So while they're able to kind of retrieve or copy my content, the views don't lie. So please be aware of that and please keep reporting it. Uh, I was watching somebody on TikTok live last night and she said something like, I know there's over 500 fake accounts. I was like, oh my gosh, wow. So it seems like it's going to be like a whack-a-mole. Like as soon as, you know, as soon as one is gone, then boop, 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 boop. So abundant lifestyle. Despite the fake accounts, it doesn't matter because guess what? It's our birthright to have abundance. And if the universe is always conspiring in your favor, my favor, all of our favor, whether you're watching live or the replay. So thank you so much for that, though. Okay, so Anigan, what what did you do to understand the requirements? I'm confused by the documents. I put in 10,000 hours and put in 10 years of making a lot of mistakes, and that's why I'm here today. So you don't have to put in 10 years of doing First and foremost, when you look at the documents, you want to find out what, are, what is the evaluation criteria. Usually, it's not in the performance work statement. It's also on Unison. It's on Dibs. It's um, on GPO.gov. You want to find the evaluation criteria and then go from there. I do have some videos on this. I probably will share even more. When does book get sent out? I'm able to get a signed first edition. Oh, Jason, that's sweet. The book will be um, sent out shortly. We're working with the publisher to finalize everything, make sure it looks good before it's sent out. These are the conversations that I have with my business partner all the time about being unreliable. That's right. LaVon Chalk, I reached out to Gov Global Trading Partners. That is a um, factory company for those of you who are here. Awesome. Kizzy, I'm a teacher. I, seem can't, I can't seem to find any contracts in my field, any suggestions. Well, you. it's about 
Finding, that's another big piece of how to win government contracts. You have to be able to find opportunities that align with your expertise or what you're willing to sell as a entrepreneur. So I would say, are you using the education NAICS code? So when you go into sam.gov, you want to go under products and service and type in a NAICS code. Don't use the search. Sam.gov is not Google. This is not where you're going to put in how many rings does Kobe got and find out things like that. You, you have to use the NAICS code. Okay, you got to use that. So put in a variety of NAICS codes. And you're going to find a wide variety of training needs. And probably 90% of them, you're going to be like, I don't want to do that. Well, then maybe it's not a market for you. Because the government buys the way the government buys. So then sometimes you have to flex. I started out diversity and inclusion training. That was not like my dream. I didn't go to, P I didn't get a PhD in diversity and inclusion. My PhD is in industrial organizational psychology. And I looked at organizational wellness. But I was like, oh, they're paying for diversity and inclusion. This is cool. And then as I got more and more into training, one of our big contracts, our first $4 million contract, was and is to train food inspectors. So I'm cool with that. Some people, they're like, no, that's not what I want to do. I just want to do emotional intelligence training. That's it. That's my thing. Cool. Then look for opportunities. Another tip, find businesses on LinkedIn. I don't know if Shanae is still on. Shanae Moray is like the queen of LinkedIn. Find, up, find companies on LinkedIn who are providing the type of training and education that you want to be a part of and contact them. Do they need somebody to subcontract, aka 1099? You can also go on the Dynamic Small Business Search and do the same thing too. I was told that I can't bid on government contracts because I'm pregnant. Uh, mean Teen Ann. I, I mean, I don't really... Listen, y'all, I mean, I'm intuitive. Just saying. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of like a, like you're trying to troll me because that has nothing to do with anything about government contracting. Oh, Bernie Fita. Thank you for putting, I knew it wasn't you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's, it sucks with the people who imitate you. I wish there was an easier way to get a TikTok check mark. Listen, I'm probably one of the very few people who are all about paying for a check mark. The reason I pay for a check mark and I like doing that is then you know it's me. I have a check mark on Instagram. I have I have some kind of check mark on Facebook. I don't know. I think I have something on Twitter or X. So it, it's very frustrating. I mean, but also we're talking abundance lifestyle. Our birthright is abundance, y'all. It's abundant. So just keep keep reporting them, keep sharing, but don't forget abundance. I am a prize. Thank you for the information. I have questions on micro purchases. Okay, let's talk about that. Okay, good. Shanae is still here. Shanae has over a million. Excuse me, you all. I love Topo Chico. Man, I love this stuff, but it does make me burp. I know. Probably like this is not a good choice, but listen, I'm enjoying my like one of my final evenings here in Michigan. And I have 10 years of sobriety, so I'm not doing any shots. Connect with Shanae Moret. She's here in the chat. S-H-A-N-E-E, -E, last name, M-O-R-E-T. Connect with her on LinkedIn. She's amazing. And she can help you further understand what techniques you need to employ to find these different people, especially if you want to subcontract. Uh, human resources is that you started in the beginning before it did network. Um, I just fell into diversity and inclusion and then I created the network. I mean, honestly, I didn't have a business plan. I had nothing thought out. It was like, hey, you want to subcontract? And I was like, okay. I mean, it's my story. Okay. I'm going to get to the micro purchases in a second. I'm going back. And again, thank you all for being here on the Kizzy Shopping Network, where I always offer a product or service to help take your business to the next level. The offer for today, any purchase that you make, any one that you make in the next seven, yeah, seven days, you will be offered in a drawing for yours truly to help you with a proposal. I'll probably help you live. I mean, if you're cool with that. If not, we don't have to have anything like that, but I want to be able to help you. So I'm going to take a look at these other questions. So in case you're ever wondering why I'm looking down, I'm not trying to check myself out. We already know I'm cute. I'm just looking down at my phone. Okay, factory, let's see. 
This is great. Keep the questions coming. I'm bidding on a transportation contract, Shadrik or Sadrik, uh, for the government. Would the driver need to have a clearance? Not unless the, the contract required it. Do you do one on one? Renaissance expression. The only one on one I do, it's $450,000 for eight hours. What's up, SPC? Thank you for being here today. I love it. Sarah Pin, factoring company. A company buys your accounts receivable. So let's say you have a contract for $10,000 in providing water bottles, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, I need access to this $10,000 because I need to pay for the water bottles. So they'll buy your accounts receivable, your contract. They'll give you a portion of it, anywhere from 70 to 90%, 80 to 90% of the contract value they'll give it to you in exchange they will receive the money okay they will receive the money and then they will take a percentage and then give you what remains so if so sometimes i believe the percentage ranges from one to five percent so you need the ten thousand dollars today or in the next 48 hours, they'll take one to 5% knowing that you're only going to get that a fraction, a factor up front. Then once the payment comes in, you receive the remaining amount and then they take the, their cut. So the factoring company, they are taking on all this risk, this risk that you're going to get paid, that they're going to get the money. Sometimes they may ask you to change the banking information and Sam, you know, they don't want you to run off with the money. That's how basically in a nutshell that they work. I have uh, Mike, I've been watching your videos for the past month while building my business. My question is, do I give people I hire a contract? Do I give the people I hire a contract to get a 1099 or W-2? That's up to you, Mike. That's your business decision. The IRS has clear definitions on what is a contractor and what's an employee. And, you know, it's up to you to decide. We at KBC have a combination of both. Awesome. Looking at all this, I appreciate each and every one of you being here. So micro purchases. So crude cartoons. If you search USDA Office of Small Business, they have what's called a forecast. You can see opportunities that they purchase under a certain threshold. But as far as what organizations are looking to purchase today that are considered micro, let me share with you how this works, right? Because this whole live here on Kizzy Shopping Network is about how to win contracts. So many out there say, oh, you just get a micro purchase. They just get a credit card, bam. So let me, let me break this down, okay? Let me break it down. First and foremost, there has to be a need. And a micro purchase just means that the thing that they're buying, product or service, is usually under $10,000. Now keep in mind, if somebody is making a purchase, for instance, we had a three-star admiral buy some of our training services many years ago. Uh, he had a had a much higher credit limit, if you want me to just let you know. So that's all a micro purchase is. So in order for an agency to actually conduct this micro purchase with you, one, it could be that maybe you you bid it, you win from Unison or government publishing office or dibs or even Sam. And because the value is less than 10,000, they may say, you know what? We're just, we're just John, we're just going to put it on a credit card. Do you take credit cards? This is like a micro purchase, or they may issue you a purchase order, or there are these different training forms that they will issue because of the size of the opportunity. What I have found is in my 15 years of experience, the vast majority of our micro purchases have come from relationships because of dialing for dollars, conducting outreach, doing demos, also known as capability briefs. So then when they needed something, it was, hey, um, our budget's 10,000. Hey, our budget's 4,000. Can you make this work? Of course. Do you take credit cards? Of course. So it's not so much that you go to a place to find micro purchases that they're currently making. You can go to the USDA small business site to see some things that they purchased in the past. 
is more about the value of the win and the relationships, okay? So I have a couple more things. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. Again, the offer for Kizzy Shopping Network. Any purchase that you make, and I know a lot of you have made these purchases, and I really appreciate you. If you, anybody makes a purchase this week, you are up to work with yours truly on a proposal. So the lowest cost item is seven, and right now the highest is 297. So this is the time to take care, I mean take care of. This is the time to take real full advantage of these opportunities because this stuff is gonna be changing as time goes on. And, and please don't take this. This is not like some threat or some like, oh, Kizzy just effing with us. She ain't gonna really do this. No, I really am gonna do this. So just, <laughs> just letting you know. Why? Because to provide you the highest value, there's so much more I need to do and so much time and effort to put into this. And your return on investment is amazing. Do you know how many people have won five, six, uh, let's see, and seven figure contracts through videos and my content? So it's just about investing in yourself. Because remember, what's the card today? Abundant lifestyle. You can't have an abundant lifestyle. You're being called to adapt an abundant mindset. You can't have an abundant mindset if you're like, nah, I ain't gonna pay for nothing. Uh -uh. If you're over here hoarding, I know this because I used to do it. I used to do it all the time. No, it's too much. I don't need to pay for that. I'm not gonna hire them. I can do it myself. All of the time for over 10 years. Not anymore. I have found the more that I invest, the more I give back. And I invest. I invest a lot. So please note that. Okay, back to, back to the questions. Factoring companies pays for your account receivable. They will need notice of assignment. So make sure that won't conflict with other creditors. Great tip. Okay, great. I like the question. N-Y-T-E-A-N. It seems the hardest part of government contracting is finding a subcontractor. They all feel it's not legit. So this is a good point. Thank you so much for pre-ordering for all the stuff that you do. I would like to subcontract with somebody. Okay, go ahead. This is awesome, Dawn. So, and like I said, I have more offers coming because I, I know I have to make more offers. I've gone through my hearings <laughs> training. And just bear with me because I'm, I'm balancing stuff too. We just finished the fiscal year. I have so many things I have to take care of with my main business because I have a thriving government contracting business. In addition to this, this is my passion. And this is what I'm going to further lean into. So I, I really, I can feel your, your emotion with that. It seems the hardest part is finding the subcontractor. So let me walk you through that. It's how you come across. It's all about your delivery, your packaging, your persuasion abilities. If somebody's like, oh, so um, my name is Kizzy and you know, I, I just wanna know, like, can I buy some bottle, water bottles from you? Like, I didn't need a quote for the army and you know, I'll pay you. They'll be like, what, in the, what is that? <laughs> what is that? I recently, interviewed Marcus Wilson. The video will drop soon. And he is a light. My goodness, everybody, he's amazing. So he won a $440,000 contract for janitorial work in this many months, three. And I was talking to him and I was like, well, Marcus, how did you know what to charge? How did you know about who's available? He's like, cause he had just picked up the phone and called companies no different than if you're looking for a plumber. I was like, wow, I love that analogy and just his bravado and his confidence. That's one of the big things is, hey, look, I'm really interested. I would love to get a price quote for HVAC, janitorial, flooring, 10,000 water bottles, almost broke my glass, 10,000 water bottles. You know, I, I would only take five minutes of your time. Can I read you the specs? Can I send this to you? I would love more information. Is this for an opportunity to have with the federal government? I'm a government contractor. It's that type of delivery. 
It's being very clear. It's giving them the information. It's of course making sure you're speaking with the right person. Have the call to action. This is what I'd love for you to do. This is what I will do. And keeping them informed. After you get the information, thank you so much again for the information. Oh, by the way, I submitted the poll. I just think it's really important to stay in contact with amazing partners like yourself. If you win, hey, congratulations. I just want to let you know we won. Hey, I just want to let you know we didn't win. I want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to give me that information. It's just little things like that. That's all it is. And sometimes, if, depending on what it is, you may have to just get the price and worry about the actual subcontractor down the road. We do that a lot with training because we, I, my background, I really know training, so that may be helpful. Steve Dixie, the same thing. He bid on several staffing projects, and he recently won like a million-dollar staffing contract in the Dakotas. I believe it was South Dakota. You have to check the video. But he knows staffing. He knows HR. He researched what to price. He's one of uh, my coaching students. And so for him, he didn't have to call a staffing company to subcontract. He, there were a lot of things he didn't have to worry about because of his background. So sometimes it's easier to do that because here's the deal. When you have the money, it's so much easier to get things done. If I say, hey, I'm going to give you $50 to do X, Y, Z or add some zeros, $5,000 to do X, Y, Z. Somebody's going to be like, heck yeah, I'll take that. Give it to me. A comparison to, oh, you know, can I get a price quote? Uh, price quote? Are you just another government contractor? Did y'all watch some TikTok video? You know, then it turns into that. So just putting that out there. I'm just looking at some, oh, John retracted, Gia retracted. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to answer a few more questions. Kizzy Shopping Network, any purchase that you make during the live, during the replay in the next seven days, if you made a purchase, make another one. You're entering into the opportunity for yours truly to go through um, a contract or, I mean, a proposal with you. So Shanae said, we cost ourselves so much by not paying for speed because we cost ourselves time by thinking we have it. Are you saving this live? Yes. I always, the lives are always posted. And then my amazing team, MD and his brother Zohar, they usually will add a really cool thumbnail in the next 20 to 48 hours. So Yes. Um, and I agree with you, Shanae. You know, I, I spoke with someone who I think it took them 15 months to get an A-day set aside. And it's like, if they would have hired a company, it probably would have taken maybe this many for. So it, again, it's up to you. It's up to your budget. It's up to what's going on in your life. Nobody's asking you to take out a bunch of loans and put yourself in debt. It's just about making those decisions. What is the priority? Is it going to Puerto Rico? Is it Christmas gifts? I don't know. Is it working on your business? I don't know. Only you know the answer. John, in your experience, are there any profits that can be made in firm fixed contracts for middleman service? So John, it's no different than anything. Like the profit of this is gonna be different than the profit of this. And, and what if this company sells both? Let's see, who makes this? Okay, let me see if I can get a business name on here. So this is a bottler. For bottled water quality, okay. Made in Mexico by, I think it says CIA Topo Chico. So what if Topo Chico also owns a company who makes glasses? Now, before you think like, Kizzy, that's crazy. One of my brothers works for a company connected to Keurig, and that Keurig company is connected to a bottling company that provides Dr. Pepper. So just work with me. So the margins on this is going to be different than this. So you're looking at margin. You're looking at the profit after your expenses and your costs. So when it comes to how to win a contract, definitely having a cage code, knowing the criteria, understanding, are you going to take the expert entrepreneurial route, figuring out subcontracting. Also, when it comes to the profit, it's going to vary on the evaluation criteria, what you're selling, and your expenses. There are some people who may make a 90% profit. There are some who make a 2% profit. 
But it's no different than a lot of things in business. You have restaurants. What is an average restaurant profit? Like 3%? But we still have restaurants. So it just, it honestly varies, John. It really, really varies. Cynthia, just looking at government contracts, where do you recommend starting? Joining my Facebook group is if you have a cage code, even if you don't, the best place to start is there. Definitely join the Facebook group. Just give me a second. And I can't express enough. Let me put the card back up. That I, I put the whole long link in there. This run is so powerful, y'all. I'm telling you, you are being called to adopt an abundant mindset. Focus on the blessings in your life and express gratitude for the blessings. Waking up, being alive, having electricity, having air, having a dishwasher. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have a dishwasher and it wasn't because we couldn't afford it. My, my mom was not about a dishwasher or air conditioning. Excuse me. And thank you again. I'm, I know I'm burping, but man, I love this Topo Chico. I'm so grateful for it. I always like it in a little squishy bottle too. Okay. Should we still go crazy right now with submitting since it's beginning? Everything by John? Heck yes. Bid, bid, bid. I said what I said. <clears throat> yeah, because most people won't. They're going to be like, oh, it's too hard. I got to get ready for Halloween. We got Thanksgiving. I got to make some pies. I'm hosting Christmas. I'm a new grandma. You know, those kinds of things. I mean, I'm forever 28, so don't get it twisted. Seriously, you have a lot of people that are going to tap out. So this is where, this is where you're really made, y'all. This is that time of the year. Where things are a little different. That's why this card is so appropriate. How do you win contracts? Having an abundant mindset. Abundance, trust that abundance is your birthright. That the universe is always conspiring in your favor. That's powerful. So I'm going to read a few more questions. And again, I appreciate each and every one of you being here. I know I've been on for a while and I really appreciate it. When submitting uh, MWBE to the federal government. Can I use the submission I did for a local? It's completely different. Uh, they don't have a W. They, they have a, we have a woman owned set aside an eight a set aside service disabled veteran owned, and then the by Indian act. So this is a little different. Jay, the trucker, can you submit logistics, logistics contracts, how do you know if your prospective opportunity is one that you can subcontract out if it's too big for a job of your organization? It's based on the performance work statement. Can you subcontract? You, you can, I mean, in theory, you can subcontract anything out. There are different rules and regulations around the percentage, but you have to keep in mind, not every agency follows the federal acquisition rules or the defense federal acquisition rules. Not every agency follows them and not every opportunity adheres to them. So yes, you can sub them out. It's about understanding the performance work statement, AKA the workload. So let me give you an example. If I came across an opportunity where they said we want 200 courses in a span of six months, I'm totally subcontracting that out. And I may even partner with the teaming company because I don't have the current team members to provide 200 virtual or in-person courses like that. I just don't. Is that a bad thing? Of course not. Amazon. So here in Muskegon, Michigan, it's so cute. Like Amazon, you know, they got their blue vests on. In Miami, they don't always have their blue vests on, but that's neither here nor there. So one day I was waiting for my package and I went downstairs because I don't have a door person here and that's all right, you know. So I'm outside, I'm looking, I'm like, man, I see on the thing, like the Amazon's here, right? And then this really sweet guy comes with glasses and I kind of peek over and I see like somebody else in the car with him. And I, hopefully I'm not getting this person in trouble. I'm not trying to get them in trouble. I'm just making a point because it was so cute. And it was like a dude and I don't know, his wife, his girlfriend, his friend, like in his personal vehicle. And he was like, oh, I thought it was there because this building's a little confusing. But I just was like, oh, this is so cool, like that he can use his personal vehicle. I encountered that in Miami, too, where a woman used her personal vehicle. and She was with her daughter delivering. The point is this. Just because he had a blue vest on, does that mean he's an Amazon employee? He's probably a subcontractor. So a lot of companies do it, more than just Amazon. 
Okay, message retracted. Okay, cool, y'all, that's fine. How long does it take to receive WSB and EDWSB? Right now, nine months, I would say. Is it recommended to have a designated bookkeeper on staff or just as needed? Chris Hill, I would say as needed, maybe monthly. I know QuickBooks offers one. I'm not saying you have to use theirs, but it is something to look into. So if y'all have any more questions, this is the time. So for those of you just joining, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. I've been awarded over $50 million of federal government contracts. We recently won an $8 million contract, a $300,000 contract. We're bidding on some recompetes. We're doing a lot of real cool things. Just wanted to say hello, Dr. Parks. You're awesome. Dominic, you're awesome. Every single one of you is here. Here is awesome. Kizzy Shopping Network, any purchase you make this week, you're interested into a drawing for yours truly to help you with a proposal. This is our card for the day, y'all. Get ready. I have a lot of change coming. I'm going to be in Mexico for a month. I'm going to be on the road. Have a lot of things coming. How would taxes work for getting government contracts? It depends. Like, I don't pay. So are you referring to taxes on products? Or are you referring to your income tax? Like as an individual, are you talking about your company tax? I would need a little clarification. Just signed up for your Facebook group. Looking forward to getting into contracting very soon. Awesome. Check out the group. We almost have 6,000 members. It's a beautiful group. And here's the other thing. There are business owners in there who are doing seven figures. There are government employees in there. So also keep that in mind. And just because somebody doesn't post doesn't mean they're not in the group. There's almost 6,000 people in there. When submitting, okay, got that. I'm just double checking. I think I've, I've covered everything. Ah, he gave a great answer to Cynthia. Uh, John did start with investing time into learning, taking notes. I agree. You got to learn and apply. Learn and apply. It's LA. Learn and apply. Not just for the Lakers. It's learn and apply. And the, the best part is the learning. Awesome. I'm so glad you bought everything, John. You're so sweet. Is you learn so much as you're applying. There's so many, like, I could have read all of the books out there on having a company and having employees. I didn't really learn until I did. Nothing prepared me for getting a phone call that one of my employees was handcuffed to a hospital bed. But you know, it did prepare me. My background in psychology, I kind of figured that there was probably a psychological issue. We dealt with it. These are real world things. So some to keep in mind. That's right, that abundant life. 8A update. 8A application is back open. So if you qualify for the 8A, now is the time. Get in there. I would get in there fast, especially because it's an election year. I am bidding for the first time tomorrow. Should I bid like crazy or hold off? Bid, bid, bid. Bid like crazy. Does SAM registration mean that you're certified in minority, woman-owned, if that's how you elected? Jay and everybody else. And about how to win contracts. There are set-asides, meaning that instead of having a ton of competition, it's further narrowed as small business, and then further narrowed when you're a set-aside. When you self-select, it's cute and cool and it's awesome, but in order to truly be eligible for those set-asides, you have to apply and obtain the set-aside. So they're service-disabled, veteran-owned, woman-owned, economically disadvantaged woman-owned, 8A. There's something over here that's a bit different, the Buy Indian Act. If you're Native American and um, are recognized one of, by one of the federally recognized tribes, and then there's a, a Super 8As, Alaska Native Organizations, Native Hawaiian, and Tribal. So that's basically all of them in a nutshell. So other than the Buy Indian Act and the Super 8As, you have to apply for the rest, and it's through the government. Okay, well, this has been beautiful. Ah, company tax and individual. So it depends on the structure of your business. So I highly suggest, but please we meet with an accountant, talk to an accountant. I am not a financial advisor. If you have an LLC or an S Corp, make sure you file as an S Corp. So I'm in pretty much most of my businesses are S Corps. So the earnings flow to me. So I'm not paying taxes on the company, I'm not double taxed. So all the earnings flow to me. That's why it's really important to have a savvy financial person, tax attorney, what may have you, because there's more tax code out there to help you save money as an entrepreneur than for you to pay taxes. Because the lower your revenue, then the lower your income and the lower you have to pay on taxes. 
that's why one of the like highest tax thing in our society is income. Because this, our country does not reinforce somebody being an employee. If you open up Forbes, you're not going to see a neurosurgeon on there. You're going to see uh, Michael Jordan, Jay-Z, hedge fund people, crypto people. But you're not going to see a neurosurgeon. Because it has nothing to do with your, like when it comes to income, we tax that at a higher rate. But when it comes to being an entrepreneur, we are contributing to society at large. The vast majority of businesses in this nation are small businesses, meaning one person. The majority of small businesses is this many people. So never downplay yourself. Never say, oh, I'm small. I'm just me. Yeah, you're just like most of the people. That's normal. So when it comes to tax time, the powers that be are in our favor. Because remember, we're living that abundant life, y'all. That abundant life. You're being called to adapt an abundant mindset. Focus on the blessings in your life and express gratitude. Trust. Abundance is your birthright. And the universe is always conspiring in your favor. Okay? So make sure you get professional help. I'm going to answer a couple more things. I love and adore each and every one of you. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Do you still need a capability statement even if you're new and new even if you're new with no experience? Yes. Even if you don't have any experience. My first capability statement, it definitely looked like I had no experience. But you know what? I was confident. I was so proud of it. I'm still proud of that thing. So yes. A days open. I'm getting confused when you say something about selling to the government. Can you explain again and how I can search for those contracts? So Daphne. I use the word selling because that's what we're doing, right? Some people, I, I don't know what they'll say, like a government, con I don't know what they say, honestly. I just know we are selling. We are selling. I am here to spend 50, hold on, let me get my pile. To get back this. I want to put in 50 and get back this. Who wants that? Isn't that what you want? You don't want to pay this and get back this. You want to pay 50 and get back all of this. So we're selling, right? We're selling. Just like here on YouTube, what are they selling? Ads. That's one way Google makes a lot of their money is through ad spend. That's why you may have just seen an ad. Ads pop in my content because I am monetized here on YouTube. So when it comes to the federal government, we are typically selling a product, right? Medical products. It could be clothing, it could be um, electronics, they buy podcast stuff, they buy cameras, they buy ring lights, they buy like fencing materials. It could be a service, and a service is something that a human being typically does. So you can find these opportunities on SAM.gov, on Unison, FedConnect, on Government Publishing Office, Dibs. I think it covers most of them. So join my Facebook group if you haven't. I'm going to answer a couple more. You all are amazing. If I set up two different entities, can I apply for an 8A for the both of them? So Chris Hill and everybody else here, you get one shot. It's like Eminem. You get one 8A firm for nine years. That's it. You only get one. The only exception is if it's an Alaska Native organization or a Native Hawaiian organization. Not that you're Alaska Native or you're Hawaiian. It's a different type of entity. Michael B, how would you go about pricing a lodging contract? Sorry, y'all, I just heard a sound. I was like, what is that? Okay, um, how would you go about pricing a lodging contract? Like add per room or percentage? I check out other contracts with the same code, but that didn't help. So Michael B, it boils down to what are the evaluation criteria? If the evaluation criteria is lowest cost technically acceptable, how are you gonna have the lowest cost if you don't own the hotel? And then you have to add a profit. So ponder that. Just, just ponder that, okay? Now, if it's a situation where they need hotels in Keokuk, Iowa, and there's only a couple of options, that's a little different. But if you're talking something like Charleston, for instance, I don't know if you're looking at that one or not. But if it's a, a city where there's a ton of different hotel options, it's going to be really difficult to win because you don't own the property. And the key when it comes to profit or margins is the price at which you get it. 
So with the product, it's, hey, what if I'm able to get this glass for a quarter and I can sell it for $2.99, that's awesome. But if you get it for a penny and sell it at $1.99, I mean, come on, you know, or $2.99, it's awesome. So the same happens for services. It's just, okay, I can pay a trainer $1,500, but if I'm charging $20,000 for them, I mean, come on, that's amazing. Uh, Chris, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. In is uh, Jay, Jay the Trucker, is bidding technically just submitting quotes to the email of the person that posts the opportunity on Sam? I, I, I like that question. Bidding is in essence giving them what they have requested. And I know you might be like, uh, what the hell does that mean? Well, every opportunity is different. Sometimes they just want pricing. Sometimes they want three volumes. Sometimes they want 100 pages. So you're typically providing it at the federal level in a digital document, usually PDF and Excel. Sometimes they will ask for Word. Sometimes they will ask for it redacted. And you are sending it to the point of contact. On the state and local side, that's a little different, y'all. Sometimes they still want you to mail it. Mail five copies, include a thumb drive, right? So it's always based on the requirement. What are the requirements for 8A? You know what? I'm going to pull these up. And as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm going to close out with uh, John Neese Madison. So, uh, again, the offer for this evening is any purchase that you make this week, you will be eligible for a, um, you will be eligible for um, getting help on a proposal with yours truly. So for those of you watching the replay, it, it extends to you. So the offers that I have, close contracts for cash. It's a cool download. I have a video on um, the middleman approach for only $49. More and more offers are going to come up. So all I can say is just get ready. Get ready. Also have an offer for my challenge, 97 and 297 where it's easily 10x your money when you take it. I encourage if you sign up for the challenge to do the VIP, they're held every month because the VIP, you get a recording and you get to ask me questions. And it's best to take care um, or to sign up for that now because more than likely I will start charging 500 for people to ask me questions. So the 8A program is a legal program through the SBA and the requirements change regularly. Due to a court case in the great state of Tennessee, they made some changes. So the, pro the qualifications are as follow. You have to be a small business, have not previously participated in the 8A program, 51% owned and controlled by US citizens who are socially economically disadvantaged, have a personal net worth of 850,000 or less, a gross uh, adjusted gross income of 400000 or less, and assets totaling $6.5 million or less. Demonstrate good character. Demonstrate the potential for success, such as having been in business for two years. So, but here's the trick. And not just for this. Um, let's see. Not just for this set-aside. For all of the set-asides, you have to work them. They're like a hunting license. Just because you end up with a deer hunting license, deer don't just come to your door and go, boo, boo, boo. They, don't, they don't do that. They don't. So contracts just don't come to your door. You're not, they're not like, here, take our money, please. Just We heard you have an 8A. Take, take it all. Just take it. Just take it. Please, please. That doesn't happen. So you still have to work it which relates to one of the comments that Breezy CC 50 said, you have to establish relationships, okay? So um, past performance is not always needed. And then may you go over, put your company in the interested list. So you, you click the button on sam.gov. If you're interested, you can do that. I mean, it's, it's up to you, you don't have to do it. What's key on how to win government contracts? You have a cage code. You know where to find opportunities that you actually want to do, whether you're the one doing them, you have employees do them, or you outsource them. 
You have to have the money if you're going to sell products, to buy the products, or find funding to buy the products. You have to over-deliver because the contract is in your name if you're a prime contractor. You're there to make their life easier. And also be prepared for other project management items, like the finance piece, paying people, your QuickBooks, all of that in addition to making sure that you over deliver. These are some of the basics. The other piece is understanding what does it take to win? What is the evaluation criteria? What is the instructions to offer? What do they require and how do they want it? These are all important. These are all more important than how do I call somebody and finding a subcontractor? and How much money do I add as a profit? If the evaluation criteria is lowest cost technically acceptable and you add a 50% profit, you're going to lose. If the evaluation criteria is five resumes and you don't provide one, you will lose. The only exception is if you have a relationship with them. So dialing for dollars helps set you apart every single time. Jay the Trekker, you need to have the resource to execute on the contracts you're seeking. If you don't, you need to acquire those transportation contracts through your freight bro brokerage. That's a good point. I appreciate, John, that you said that. And hello to everybody who's here. And that's the case. You know, you don't have to prime. There are some of you that you haven't accepted that we all are entitled to an abundant lifestyle, not just your cousin or Elon Musk or LeBron James, you know, or Oprah Winfrey or Cardi B. We are all entitled to an abundant lifestyle. You're being called to an adapt and abundant mindset. So, Maybe you want to subcontract. Maybe you want to start small. Okay. But then you have to find a company who needs somebody like you. You know, people approach me all the time, or approach my company. Oh, I would love to partner with you. I only partner with my students. Oh, I would love to train for you. Okay, that's awesome. But we have to have a training opportunity. Now, unless you're an 8A, if you're an 8A, please contact me. That's a little different. But because I, there's got to be that value add, and that value add is being an 8A. So with this abundant lifestyle, take it. Don't play small, play big. So again, thank you all for being here. Uh, oh, awesome, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any purchases made, you're interested in the drawing, join the Facebook group, keep coming back. You're amazing. There's so much more to come. I know, they're extra popping today too. I did a, I used some different products. I'm gonna have my color touched up soon so yeah and it's time to be on the road i'm gonna be in mexico for a whole month so i'm excited i think i'm gonna make that a thing like live in other countries for a month i, I truly believe I, I feel like that's the thing going forward why not an abundant lifestyle why can't i you know anybody can do that just we make excuses and we're not about excuses here so we're gonna go you're amazing. I have to click the button over here. So <laughs> don't mind me. Oh, wow. Me too. I love Mexico. Yes. Oh, let me put the Facebook group. Yeah. I'm so excited to go to Mexico. This is very new for me. I've been to Mexico um, and I thought, hey, why not? Okay. That's not the Facebook group, but VIP always better. Getting, that in, getting into that course is amazing, y'all. I can't emphasize it enough. And more is to come. I hear you, I read your comments, I, ha I understand what you've written. Okay, I might have to get a new stool. This stool is a little... Okay, where did it go? Oh, look at that, that looks cool. That kind of looks like candles. Abundant lifestyle. So I'm gonna keep this up here for you. This is what's key, everybody. This is what's key. Until next time, everything is possible, y'all. Everything is possible. Thank you for being here. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Abundant lifestyle.